In this session, we're going to look at a technique to create intersections with multiple turn lanes. On my screen, I have an intersection with four approaches. You can see each one has its own left turn, right turn, and through lane. Now, this is a legitimate intersection object. If I select this, I can change the size of the design vehicle. That will adjust the radius of the curb returns. In the past, it has been a challenge to create an intersection like this because it's been difficult to line up the through lanes. In the latest version of InfoWorks that shipped in early September, we are now allowed to create intersections with offset approaches. For instance, if I select this road, you can see the grip at its endpoint. If I select this road, you can see its endpoint grip. Those do not fall at the same coordinate. In fact, they're offset the width of the lane. This allows the through lanes to line up. The trick is taking care of this road. This is a through road because I cannot have four disjointed roads create an intersection. What I did here, if I select this road, you can see I put a kink in my alignment. That kink measures the width of the lane, and this allows my through lanes to line up in this direction. Now you can create an intersection like this freestyle, although it's not for the faint of heart because the grip locations are, dare I say, unnatural, and it requires a lot of experimentation to get the intersection to work. What I've done is created a template to make this a little more repeatable, at least allows me to put the grips in the right location so I can make minor adjustments afterward. So if you're interested, I'll show you how I created this intersection. First of all, let me give credit to Eric Chappell. I watched his info tip on creating styles for left turn lanes. I like to think I took that concept and pushed it even farther. I'm hoping by sharing this idea, people may take this concept and go even farther with it. To create the intersection, I'm going to open a different model. I'll open this one called Multi-Turn Lane Intersection. I'm going to share this model in the event you would like to experiment with this idea or reverse engineer some of the styles that I have here. Let me zoom in. These are an example of the styles that I'm using to create the intersection. Here I have the traditional roadway with the green space and sidewalk. I have also created a style here. This is an asymmetrical road. It has a median on the right side of the center line. Over here I've got the exact same thing except the median is on the left side. I will also include a hyperlink to Eric's info tip on left turn line styles. He does a nice job showing how to create these. To create the intersection, I'm not going to do it freestyle. I'm going to insert a template. I'll go to data sources and I'm going to insert an FBX file. Once I insert that into the model, we'll double click to configure. We'll say this is uh, city furniture, and I'm going to use interactive placing. If I orbit this, you can see what I have. I've just got a representation of the alignment geometry. I'm going to double click to place this in the model, and I'll choose close and refresh. I will then close this palette. We'll zoom in. So this shows me where I have to put my grips to start with, just to get me in the ballpark. Since this is a 3D model, I can select it, and I can grab these uh, arrows to the outside, and I can adjust its rotation in the event I was trying to match an existing intersection. So this works well. Let me orbit this around. To create my intersection, I'm going to use design roads. This will give me a legitimate intersection object. I'm going to create this using the collector road. I'll select my standard roadway style, and then I am going to click where my template touches the ground here. Now, when you're creating a road with the design roads, you'll see it wants to put a radius in there. That's one of the reasons I'm using a collector road, because it's got a higher design speed and it will not allow the radius at these points. Once again, this concept is for visualization purposes only. There we go, let me double click. So there's my through road. Now we'll create the connectors. Let me go back to collector road. I'm going to use the same style. Click at the bottom of my template there. We'll take this down. Here's where, like I said, it's a little unnatural. You can see it wants to snap to the other center line. I'm going to hold my control key and I'm going to double click down here. You wouldn't think that would work, but it does. Let's go back to collector roads and we'll create the other approach. Let me click here. I'll come up and I'm going to hold my control key and I'll double click here. So that gives me my intersection geometry. At this point I no longer need my 3D model, so let me select this. In fact, I could delete it, but I want to take it out completely. I'll go to the data sources here. I'll right click and I'll choose remove. So that's out of the file. We can go ahead and close the palette now. This gives me my offset intersection. The next thing I'm going to do is create a style zone on this southern approach. 
I'll select the road and we will create a style zone. I'll choose style and then I'll create a zone. I'm going to use the median right style. I'll click OK and then I'll pick the point where I'd like the taper to start and then I'll take that down and I'll click down at the end. Let me click off. So here we can see the through lane and then here we can see where it tapers over for the left turn. Next, I'm going to create a forward lane zone in this area. I would like three lanes here. One represents the left turn lane, one represents the through lane, and one represents the right lane. So let me select this approach. I'll choose lanes forward. We'll create a zone. Let me push this up to the end. And then I'm going to come down and click right around the taper. I will then click in the lanes field and we'll bump this up to three lanes wide. And then I'm going to grab this grip and I'm going to pull down and it will snap to the same location where the style zone is, which will give me a nice taper. There we go. That looks good. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to select my intersection. Since we're building a large intersection, chances are we need it to accommodate more than just a passenger vehicle. I'm going to choose SU30. That'll increase the radiuses. What I'm doing here, I'm creating an intersection object that's large enough to hide all of the style changes that are going to occur in this area. So now that we've made that change, let's orbit this around and we'll take care of this approach on the north. It's going to be the same workflow because the road is going into the intersection. Let me select this and I'll go to style. I want to make a new zone, median right, OK. I'll pick where I want my taper and I'll take this down to the end. Then we're going to change this to a lanes forward zone. I'll create a zone from the end to a point just after the taper. Once the zone is created, we'll bump this up to three lanes. And then I'll grab the grip and I'll pull it down. There we go. We'll orbit this around. We'll take care of this approach. Now, this is the through road, but the workflow is going to be the same because based on the road direction, it's going into the intersection. Let me select this. I'm going to go to style. Apply zone. We'll use median right. And maybe I'll click out here take this down to the end. Then I'm going to create a lanes forward zone. Now where do we pick to place this? Well it's going to be as close as you can get. I'm going to pick somewhere in here. We can always adjust it if we have to. Let me click and then I'll drop it right about here. Let's tip this up to three lanes. Perfect. Now if you go too far, the lanes will end up spilling over into the other side of the intersection. If you go too short, your intersection will look like a knot. So you may have to grab this grip and slide it back and forth to find the sweet spot. I happen to hit it right on the money there. I'm just going to go with it. Let me grab this grip on the end and I'll pull this down. It gives me the tapers. So if you have to adjust the grip, you might have to tweak it a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about these arrows here in a second. Let's take care of this approach. Now in this case the lane is leaving the intersection so I'm going to use a different style and we'll do a backward lane zone. Let's go to style. This time I'm going to use the median left. Let me click here, take this down to the end. And then since we're on the other side of the road here we're going to do lanes backward. I want to create a zone. Let me come up and once again I'm going to try and find the sweet spot here. Let me just click. We'll see what happens. We'll go here. We'll take this down and maybe click here. Okay, didn't care for that. So we're going to take that zone out. When you're creating the backward zone, you cannot drag the grip. I can drag the grip on this one, but I can't drag the grip on this one. So if it fails, then we have to remove the zone and create it again. So lanes backward. Let's create a zone. I'm going to go maybe right here. We'll try that. Take it down to here. Then we'll bump this up to three lanes. And in this case, I went too far. You can see I'm spilling over into the other side. I can't drag the grip. Let's take this out one more time. We'll give this one more shot. I'll create my zone. And then we'll bump this up to three. Perfect. Let me grab the grip and I'll pull this down to match the style location. There we go. Now since this is an intersection, I can grab the intersection object. Let's look at a way that we can maybe get the arrows to show up. In the latest version of InfraWorks, I can go to lane markings here and then I can click 
here and you can see it doesn't recognize all three lanes but usually if I tweak that roller just a little bit that'll be enough to get those arrows to show up so there's my intersection now a couple adjustments let me spin this around if you want to make an adjustment on this we can always grip edit the the grips that are in the intersection you can move them a little bit you can't move them too far so we'll tread lightly with those if you want to adjust the location of this taper if I select to take the taper or to, to move the taper down you would think that we could go to style and grab this roller you cannot you cannot have a style change and a lane change that are really close together it's just it's they have to be at the exact same location so in order to do that I'm going to take my lanes forward let's take this zone in order to adjust this taper I've got to take this zone out now if I go to my style I can adjust this easily once I adjust that I can come back and do a lanes forward we'll add a zone from the end here down to here we'll bump this up to three and then I'll just drag that grip down there we go let's grab the intersection one more time we'll go back to lane markings and I'll just touch that roller to get my arrows to come back There we go. So we've got a legitimate intersection that contains multiple turn lane configurations. I'm certain that at some point in the near future, InfraWorks will have a dedicated solution to create intersections with multiple turn lanes. Until then, this is one approach you can explore.